Greetings, and welcome to Channel Other Doc. I'm Jim, your friendly Lacuna GM. I use he, him pronouns, and this is our Invisible Sun campaign, The Edge of Paradox. The Invisible Sun is a surreal slice of life game by Monty Cook Games. Uh, we are integrating the directed campaign, but most of this game happens spontaneously. And uh, we have a full cast tonight! We have everybody! Oh my god! All right. I'm curious as to what what conjunction has taken place, uh, but uh, it, it is uh, I, I am grateful for it, whatever it is. Uh, praise to praise to the, uh, the 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 great old ones or the whatever eldritch things are, are out there that guiding guiding their hand toward whatever my hand toward whatever it is that's happening. Um, <laughs> but, uh, let's go around and say hi to everybody. Um, see see who they are who they're playing. We shall start with Janiya. Hello. Hello, my name is Janaya, and I use she, her pronouns, and I will be playing Shah Gamelan, an established gallant who cages adversaries, uh, oh, sorry, an established gallant of the Order of Makers who cages adversaries, um, and Shah Gamelan also uses she, her pronouns. Excellent, excellent. And Wild, hello. Yes, hello. I am Wild Engineer, and I am playing Chantano. An itinerant empath of the Order of Apostate who splinters into fragments. Uh, they go by they, them pronouns. Awesome. Awesome. And Aris, hello. Hello, I am Aris, and tonight I will be playing Roshka Ruzik, the aromatic empath apostate who converses with everything. Uh, she uses she, her pronouns, and so do I. Good, 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 good. And, uh, now let us head over to Anino. Hello. How's it going? My name is Anino. I am playing Mac the Husk, itinerant enthusiastic of the Order of the Goetica, provides a vessel for spirits. They then. Awesome. And finally, Danielle. Hello. Hi, I am Danielle, and I will be playing Vormir Ivanas, aka Vor. Um, we both use she, her pronouns. And Vor is a connected ardent of the Order of Weavers who shepherds minds. Delightful, delightful, excellent, excellent. And uh, like we do with most games on this channel, we're going to be using the X card, the N card, and the O card. If we hit something that's crossing a line for one of us, any of us can type an X in the Zoom video chat or anywhere else or make an X symbol. And we'll back up and do something else. If something happens that we're okay having in the game, but we don't want a graphic description of it, we can type an N in the Zoom chat, and we'll fade to black on it or put it behind a veil, so it'll be there, but we won't go into detail. Finally, if we're exploring a topic or an area of roleplay that's particularly intense for us, but we want to keep going anyway, uh, we can put an O in the chat to let us know that we're okay and that we're good to keep piling on the drama. Uh, something else we can do is put an O with a question mark after it if we're moving into a difficult topic or if we say or we do something and then think, maybe that might have been a little too much. Uh, then everyone else can respond to that again with an X, an N, or an O and let us all know if we're still doing okay. And uh, now we return to Saturn. Things have happened. Um... Most recently, um, in, in, in our last session, uh, we had our first guest, um, and uh, this was a Balthasar of the Order of Makers who, is, uh, who makes mobile furniture, um, was, uh, was there as uh, those, those who, some of those who are, who are here present went to a library, um, in a, just a little local library up in Silver Hill, to try to find a few different things. Uh, Chantano was, uh, uh, well, let's see, yeah. Mac was looking for books on, uh, on to, to help with the whole Limerent Street situation. Uh, Shaw, I think, was looking for books uh, relevant to projects that uh, she was working on, and Chantano wanted to find a book uh, that explains how to destroy the gold sun. Uh, you know, just just because, you know, you might need that every now and then. Um, <clears throat> they went up there and did that. Uh, not not destroy the gold sun. They uh, that that has they haven't done that yet. Um, <laughs> they went up there and they uh, there was a, there was a lacuna uh, that was the librarian there, um, but they also found Balthazar there, um, who was uh, just sort of looking into different ways to possibly uh, set up this uh, house that he eventually that they eventually want to build. Um, 
when they were looking for this, uh, when Shannon went up to the to the front desk, you know, the Lacuna was a bit, was a little bit skittish. Um, <clears throat> wanted to find out if they had this book about <laughs> snuffing out the sun in twelve easy steps, gold edition, um, and. Uh, the, uh, the librarian went back into the stacks, and then there was a sudden implosion. Um, and uh, then they, they, the librarian was not seen again. They went back in there, and they found that the book now looked very much like the lacuna had. The, the book now was itself a portal to another location. A hole in reality. Um, because apparently... After you know looking at a few things, they realize this is um, this just is one of the uh, one of the natural laws that uh, that happen in in, in Saturn, and uh, that is that you know if you leave a book unread, you know groups of books un unread, just cramming them together in a place like you know a forbidden lore library um, for too long, uh, leave them undisturbed for too long. That that builds up, uh, that uh, that potential energy builds up of the unread book, and so it can get very much like like dynamite or uh, plastique gets when it gets uh, you know when it gets sweaty, and so it becomes unstable. You jostle the book, and it reads you. Um, that's what happened to the uh, that's what happened to the lacuna. Um, you started seeking out different things they could do to manipulate the book and move the book. Balthazar kind of figured out a way to do it. Um, Chantano actually managed to go in and uh, make contact in a dream state with the librarian and get them to just follow through with the whole turning yourself inside out thing. And that basically fixed it. Um, in the meantime, Mac also managed to, uh, to summon... Uh, one of the spirits that they'd interacted with earlier um, was more more sort of a lore intense spirit and uh, made a deal where it's like okay just get me the books that I need to uh, to learn about this whole limerence situation and uh, you can take one of these books from in here as long as I don't know wh which one it is for a plausible deniability and it's not something that's going to, to cause us immediate problems uh, basically <laughs> and um, and uh, and and, uh, and it's a big favor, so you owe me a favor. And uh, the spirit agreed immediately for some reason. Um, <coughs> just uh, immediately, just went and did it. And uh, and uh, Mac now has those uh, those those couple of books. Um, meanwhile, <laughs> uh, during all this time, uh, Vor was having uh, having lessons with. Uh, with uh, her teacher, uh, Lady Volt, um, who is a uh, who is also a weaver, just a uh, higher up Vizlai, um, and uh, basically managed to. Uh, there was a there was an a, a Nemovore, an entity that uh, goes around, it's sort of formless, goes around absorbing memories from people, um, and managed to. Uh, you know, in, in the process of uh, gaining another aggregate, managed to use it to uh, coalesce it down into a more solid substance that she could now use to carry it around in. And she has adopted it, <laughs> apparently now, and is carrying it around with her. This, this, very, dangerous, this very dangerous being uh, around with her wherever she goes. <laughs> Have you named it yet, by the way? <laughs> I have not, but I am considering several names. Oh, good. <laughs> we must know as soon as it has a name. Actually, I was in another game where we were dealing with something uh, that was made of memories, and we very, very narrowly missed out on naming it Meme, so I am actually thinking about naming this creature Meme. It's. I mean, you know, it would work. It's, uh, it's appropriate. Um, but... Uh... <laughs> Probably what I'm going to go with. More on that as, as, those, uh, as those delights unfold. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think the question then becomes, uh, I think, so the uh, those who were at the library stayed there overnight, pretty much. 
Um, slumber party. Yeah, they had a slumber party. <laughs> um, slumber research party. Um, in the morning, uh, Balthazar has gone off to take care of uh, their projects, but I think they, they, they provided you with their contact information should you need uh, them to consult on anything. Uh, I know that there were some questions about a, uh, a particular uh, kind of, not exactly a summoning per se, but a... Uh, was it an incantation or was it the other thing? The thing that starts with an E. About a thing that starts with an E that might cause spidering. Um, no, that's not a problem. No, I guess it could have been an incantation. Um, that might, that maybe caused the spidering at Variagin's house. Um, but, uh, and so, you know, because, because Balthasar knows a lot about, uh, just sort of houses and the building and moving of, uh, of small, of, uh, inanimate objects, things of that nature, then that's, you know, it's like, they're, they're a resource you can call on at some point if you so desire. Um... Between sessions, <laughs> basically, um, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, so I guess uh, the the only thing as far as catching up goes is just so uh, so so uh, so Aris knows. Uh, basically, uh, after getting out of the uh, out of the school, folks sort of fled uh, to avoid Karen um, and. Uh, so, so three of these people went north to check out the library. What did Oroshka go and do? Um, that's an excellent question. I hadn't considered up until this point. <laughs> uh, did I know we were trying to avoid Karen? Because I feel like I'm out like, where are you going? <laughs> oh. Okay. So, or not. I don't know. If anybody has a better suggestion, I'm all ears. Do we just leave Aroshka with Karen? <laughs> I did such a good job at the big box store. They're like, she could probably talk her way out of this. It's entirely possible. I mean, I don't think we would have intentionally left you to Karen, but it's entirely <laughs> possible that we could have been like, you know... Uh, obviously, we all know that we're going to walk over this way, and Aroshka being Aroshka, who's a little bit more open-hearted than the rest of us, would have been like, oh, somebody's waving at us! <laughs> <laughs> so, the thing being uh, that, uh, so, so you can avoid Karen if you so desire. Um... You do not have to be subjected to Karen, <laughs> um, but uh, it's so. So I guess the question is: Did you choose to avoid Karen, or did you go and talk to her? How much do I know about Karen? I guess because if I've only sort of heard a few things about Karen, I'd probably be like, "I'll oh, go see what's up with that person." But if I know. I like no. <laughs> I'd probably be like, "Oh, <laughs> I don't know where everybody else went, but I'm leaving." I think that's largely up to uh, how much your 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 compatriots told you about her. <laughs> how much did you? How much did you tell her? Did anyone warn Aroshka about Karen? This is what I want to know. <laughs> I mean, I feel like we've talked about Karen because everybody knew who Karen was. We talked about Karen in respect to the going and making the bunt cake. True, true. So I, I think that you would have known that, that Karen was somebody who's very much trying to create the illusions of shadow within the space. I think you would have at least known that. Now, whether yeah. or not you would have known what kind of person she was being within that illusion of shadow i'm not entirely sure um i think it would have been alluded to it would be up to you as far as whether or not eroshka would have picked up on that i think you also probably would have had the opportunity uh to pick up on just the sheer amounts of trepidation shaw in particular has when discussing karen well, let's say I like waved, realized who it was. By that time, everybody else was gone. I was like, oh shit, and just ran away <laughs> in an entirely unsubtle fashion. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, so you did that, and uh, Karen was waving and confused, had a confused look on her face, and then you didn't see this happen, but you sort of almost had this feeling as of someone taking out a small notebook and making a little check in a box. <laughs> oh no, I'm on the you list. Could, you could feel it from a distance. So, um, there is, you know, I think probably for much of that evening, um, so that we can get everyone caught up to roughly the same time period, um, I expect, um, well, yeah, let, let me, let me go ahead and let, let's, let's, let's go ahead and do a little bit of figuring here. Um, I think probably, uh, that... As far as, yeah, as far as getting anything else done, you know, government buildings probably would have been closing um, by that point in the afternoon. And so it's hard to say. You, you, if you wanted to accomplish more things that evening, it would have been possible um, for Arushka and Vor to, uh, to get a couple things done. Um, well, I know I have to go to the Jarrett's office for personal reasons, but I, I'm also aware, I think, that my friends are going there. Yeah, there was a, there was some motion. There there was a previous session during which it was suggested they might go to the Jarrett's office. We'll see if anyone does that. Uh, but um, so if I know we're, we all have a reason to go there, I probably will not go alone. I don't have anything I want to get done. I might read that book. I found that book. Oh, yes. That I apparently wrote. Yes. Um, so can you remind me what, uh, what it was that you were looking for when you got that book or what the book was supposed to be about? I was just looking for something related to the... Uh, it was, was it not related to the disappearing. No, it was one of the things that we went to the school about, and it was like we hadn't looked at it yet. So I picked up something about it, but what I got was a book that I had apparently written myself. Yeah, well, I yeah. wasn't the only author, but I was one of the authors. <laughs> what was it though? It wasn't the street that disappeared. Well, well, was it was it a book that had like things in? I remember somewhere, and I don't know if this was your book or if this was something else. Uh, there was a list of things. And some of it was missing. And I thought it was a list of things related to the Numa. Um, oh, but I'm not sure if it was that book or not. That was my thing. It was your thing. From okay. the school, not from the library. Well, yeah, no, this is, I'm, I'm kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah but the thing got I this was, book at the school. Yeah, I got that for the school. So. I don't remember what. <laughs> So I think we're going to say, uh, until such time, until the time comes that I, I have a moment to review everything, uh, that um, whatever whatever temporal, whatever time pocket I somehow magically conjure up that allows me to do that, uh, I think that uh, you probably, this book is probably going to have, well, I know how we're going to find out what's in there. I know exactly how we're going to find out what's in there. I'm going to draw a card. <laughs> okay. This looks like one we might not have had. Let me go ahead and uh, let's let's switch over here and find out what it is. All right. This is the alchemist. Um, I don't know if we've we might not have had the alchemist yet. Um, it's the eight of secrets. Its meanings are complexity, transformation, and knowledge. The alchemist seeks transformation. It's the adept of uh, of secrets. The alchemist tr seeks transformation usually in the sense of advancement or enlightenment. She hopes to better herself through understanding. 
Uh, as adept of the Secrets family, the, uh, the alchemist is, of course, complicated. Uh, her knowledge is deep and vast. Magical processes surround her. Chemicals and, substance, and substances and the flame that catalyzes them all dance upon her fingertips. But her true raw materials are her own essence and her own soul. Makers often see this card as a good omen. In Divination, the alchemist's complexity suggests that there's far more to a situation than previously understood. Just as often, however, she indicates drastic and sudden change, a new opportunity, a new person involved, or a new facet to a problem. Should one turn the alchemist and dangerous elixir consecutively, this is called the ultimate transformation, and it suggests total and complete upheaval of the situation and possibly someone involved in it. I cannot wait to see what the next card will be. Um... Hmm. Yeah, okay. So. Yes. I think this book that, that you helped write. Um, is, a, is kind of a, a good portion of it has treatise, treatises on magical theory. Um, and in particular, it does sort of, it, it seems to involve, uh, methods of, um, shall we say, transposing, um, certain things or rather it's it's how do you explain this it's like there are certain theories about how to uh there are several different ways one can get into it backwards and forwards and a lot of it's a lot of it is vent stuff that you really don't feel an attachment to anymore um but it seems very much a thing about like it, it talks a lot, lot I mean, you know, it, there, there's a lot of sort of basic philosophical stuff, even stuff that gets reflected in Shadow. Uh, the idea that, you know, we can judge a table by its tableness, that kind of thing. How much of a thing is a thing to be the thing? But then it talks about juxtaposing that with human consciousness. Um sort of an idea of like if we were to try to invest a thing with human with with a human consciousness how how much of an effect would there be if it's a specific consciousness like can you actually move from one thing to another um, or can you copy yourself from one thing to another? And then, kind of disturbingly, you do find questions about how to weaponize that idea. Um, and you're kind of picking up some vibes from some of the stuff that you saw in your house. Um, that right now, in this book, it looks as though it's like theoretical but it seems as though it might actually have that's the thing it's it, it, it talks about things that it's like well we're not sure if there are practical applications and then you're distinctly remembering like no with this particular with this particular sort of gun like thing that I created Apparently, I put it into practice. Now, it's not exactly like a gun of making you think you're a table lamp type deal. <laughs> um, it's not quite that. But there is a lot about... It's, it's, it's a lot about displacement. Um, how to displace a being. So you put them in a table lamp? <laughs> That you can, that's one direction you could take this kind of thing. Um, 
Or you can just... Like, if you're weaponizing it, you can displace them all together, and or perhaps, you know, or perhaps it doesn't matter where they go, or perhaps you send them... Or perhaps you send them, or you swap them with ma some of them with matter from the red, and they disintegrate. It's, uh... There's, there's, it depends on what direction you take it in as to whether or not, sort of here, knife's edge, whether this could be used for good or evil. And, um, you're remembering a conversation that you had. As this is sort of unlocking as you're looking at this. You're remembering a conversation you had with that chap that you didn't recognize when you came back. Uh, that fellow that helped show you to your house, that guy with the uh, sort of wearing robe and kind of he had, I think he had dirty blonde hair if I remember correctly. I think that's how I described him. Um, you remember he used to live in a thing that was kind of like a wizard's tower on, on Limerence Street. And he was very interested in sort of the aspect of investing yourself in a thing and how that taps the soul. There are references to somebody's work in here, but you actually can't find the specifics. Like somebody besides me? Yeah, it's like there are places where it's like sections, a few sections are missing around the specifics of how that thing that you're remembering from that conversation works. <laughs> But, um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> These are the things that you gleaned that evening. I am now going to cause the sun to rise. <laughs> <laughs> if there's, if there's nothing else anyone <laughs> tries to do overnight. <laughs> Actually, is it possible for me to get um, another ephemera or incantation because I used one of mine and this is like the first proper downtime I think I've had Ooh. to to call another one? Holy crap. <laughs> is there a, how are you going about it? Well, I think it says in the, the rules that like when you when you want to get a new one, you can you can you can try to ask for something that you've already had or you can just like open yourself up to Open yourself up to the universe and see if a thing Yeah, appears. to the universe and just kind of roll the dice and see what you get, which is obviously what Vor's going to do, because... Sure. <laughs> that's, you know, what she's all you, about uh, rolling dice. Tell me a thing that you, uh, you, you had, uh, like, it was, it was, like, what, level one to three stuff? Uh, yeah, I think so. Hang on. Let me go back and see what I had. Um, so yeah, I had a level one luster dust, which I haven't used. Level two, Praxis of Thieves, which I haven't used. And then level one, Incantation, was Innocent Stars Crowd About the Sleepless Prince. And that was my beautiful butterfly dress that I used at the party. Yes. Okay, so you're looking for an ephemera to, like, replace that. Yeah, so preferably an incantation, since that's why. I... Preferably an incantation. Okay. Yeah, but it was, like, all low-level stuff, so it doesn't have to be, like... Gotcha. I right. just wanted to have another one, so in case I need something. I, yeah, I understand. That's, uh, that's, it's helpful to... It's good to be prepared. Um, let me just, let me just open this thing up real quick. All right. Incantations. All right. Just going to see if I can pull something real quick. Uh, 
And I'm going to have you... Yes, I think we're going to... We're going to, we're going to use dice now. Ooh! We're going to use them very randomly. What kind of dice? <laughs> Being when dice. That's how that happens. We're going to use uh, dice randomly as opposed to dice with, like, directed math. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to loaded dice, which... Yes. <laughs> which Vor never uses, by never, the way. Never. 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 Could, could you roll a, uh, could you roll a d7 for me, please? A d7? Yes. Ooh. Fancy yeah. schmancy. Yeah. We're, we're, we're pulling out all the stops here now. Well, I guess I will roll that on roll twenty since I don't have a D seven. That, that's that's yeah. Unless you unless you bought Zachi dice, then I I, I I don't think you probably don't have one. Uh, I got um, a four. Okay. All right. Now let me reopen the thing so I can see what four is. Um, <laughs> two, three, four. Huh. All right. Good, good. I gotta open up the thing with the incantations real quick, just so that I have it. Um, incantations, here we go. Let me see if this one's appropriate for you. Oh yeah, this is appropriate for you. What ones do you have right now? So I have the Luster Dust uh, and the Practice of Thieves, both of which are not incantations. They are ephemera. Okay. Um, one can turn into a lock pick, an oil can, wire cutters, or a pry bar, and the other one is dust that makes things more beautiful. So you're going to pick up an incantation. Awesome. Um, I think this is something that comes to you uh, as you are... As you are working that evening, doing what you you know generally do with uh, with various things, someone bets it basically, and uh, so you come away with this scrap of paper, um, and on it is an incantation. The name of the incantation is "A Moment of Clarity Before the Curtain Rises." It is a level two incantation. When you speak to someone, you think of exactly the right thing to say. You add three bene to your interaction pool. Nice. I will go ahead and I will... I will copy the text over into the thing so you can just... If you, if you need to have that there. There it is. Thank you. All right. So, are we good with the sun rising? Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure. Do I actually have the book about collapsing the golden, the path to the golden sun, or yes. is that still on order? Okay, so I do have. Yeah, that was that was the book that um, uh, that that was the book that um, was in that uh, that that the the the, that the lacuna got absorbed into. Um, right. Yeah. So yeah, that book, by the way, is you took a little time, I think, probably to leaf through it uh, that evening. Um, it's written in very much a sort of kind of like an, an epic poem type deal, um, and uh, it talks. It basically is is very much a. Uh, it is very much kind of a kind of a Gilgamesh type deal where it talks about, uh, but. Uh, well, not Gilgamesh specifically, but it talks about things like sailing over the edge of the world. It talks about basically going on a great journey and finding uh, finding uh, several objects that be, that became a person or a person that became objects. Um, sort of in the, it is this strange sort of um, it is a strange sort of epic poem type deal. Um, a saga um, and uh, but it does talk about essentially the gathering of uh, it, it's it's interesting right 
It talks about connecting the sun with its opposite. And the idea that the idea that a sun that that in a way and this is where it sort of gets near the end and it gets really philosophical, right? The idea that in a way the suns are all the same sun. Well, they're all different facets of the same sun. But yet they are still separate suns. But each sun too has an opposite. And you think maybe it's talking about the night side a little bit, maybe? But that should the uh, should that which you know when, should the opposite seek destruction and you when it talks about the opposite it's weird you're not sure if it's talking about just the night side in general or about like a person because it's it seems to be sort of blur the line there between the idea of the night side of the suns and people um, but it's like should it seek to should it seek to uh, enter the gold? Should it become one with the gold? Then the gold would become one with it and shine no more. There are a number of things that could be clues in here. Um, it's uh, probably going to take... Uh, it, it's there, there are like a series of things that the like the 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 protagonists do um uh, you know there there may be something to it could take some time to decipher yeah yeah so what uh, is there a what would people like to do as uh As the sun appears mysteriously in the sky. <laughs> yeah, does the sun arise in Saturn, or does it just... I'm going to imagine that it does. <laughs> I'm going to imagine that there is day and night. Um... There has to be a moon, because there's a, a whole bit about speaking to the moon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Speak to it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I guess, did we spend all night in the library and just sleep there and full slumber party out? Because if so, I imagine we'll... Pretty sure that was your intention. Uh, grab some coffee and decide where we go with all of our newfound knowledge, right? Yeah. Because then we decide there's no one who could tell us not to sleep in the library. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we rewrote all those rules. <laughs> When the library when the librarian came back, they they seemed to know that you were supposed to be there. So, <laughs> I guess so. I'm not with them. Yeah, so I'm, not, I'm not with them. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to figure out like how, how does one go about contacting people in Saturn? Like we don't have phones. Like is there a yeah. how do we know where to meet them? Yeah. How how would I go about finding people that I want to talk to? Well, I'm going to assume that this is done much the same way that it was in in ye olden days, um, back before we had these uh, the, these 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 cell phone things. Um, which Carrier is, pigeon. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's carrier carrier vision. Oh my god, <laughs> yes. <With a> snapper. <laughs> <laughs> or it's this, hey, um if if we want to meet back up, let's go here at this time. It was a thing called planning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> um but if they're going for like coffee, maybe we all have like a, a coffee place the that we usual all usual coffee place. Yeah. If that's the case, we, we all know that if we get separated whilst <laughs> shenanigans are occurring, we should we meet be back there up in the morning. Top of the place. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the that's the meetup spot. Yeah. That's the right. emergency plan. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, uh, Mac just crashes at uh, Sean's place. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> my couch friend. Couch surfing. <laughs> If that's the case, and we are we are all good on having like that be our emergency plan, then yeah, Vor will just stake out the coffee place in the morning. Yeah, I mean, I think that's actually reasonable, but like that that seems like a non cell phone thing to do. That is the place that we have been most often. Chateau lives upstairs. Like, yeah, you're likely to find someone there. So yeah, yeah. The broken mirror does not seem to close, um, as far as I'm aware. Um, it is a place of coffee, and as a result, it is always awake. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense, that tracks. <laughs> hey, we're going to another restaurant. <laughs> there we go. Food adventure. Here we go. <laughs> it was only a matter of time. <laughs> I like to think that those of us from the library wander in with like magical sunglasses on kind of like that post rave still out kind of look like a little shoveled and like the sunglasses and you know bit bleary yeah. mm -hmm. hey guys not too quiet we just came from the library <laughs> it's, it's very easy to get quiet by like habit if you're not careful Meanwhile, Vor's just got like three cups of coffee lined up on the table that she's already drunk. The, the proprietor <laughs> still is there. I don't have, unfortunately, the sunglasses are not in reach, so I can't put them on. But uh, he is he is there wearing his sunglasses and beret, um, and uh, he is he is serving you, serving you coffee. <laughs> Shanta, know you've never seen this person sleep. <laughs> of course not. As we all walked in, I was like, all right, are we... Shaw, did you say we could use your... Uh... No. Uh... Are, you, are you sure? I'm very sure. <laughs> um... I mean, that's okay. Um, Vor's here now, so we can just use her place. I'm sorry, use my place for what? They want to turn it into a giant spider. No, we just want no. to use an incantation. No, no, no. We are not doing any spidering incantations in my home. See, see, Vor also has sense. I still say we should use one of the other houses on the cul-de-sac. Yeah, let's use an empty house. Karen I have too much invested in my Vor. home. <laughs> Your home is a house of cards next to a gambling alley. And I have a lot of money invested in the gambling alley, thank you! <laughs> I mean, yes, and where is she to find another house of cards? It's not like you just pick one of those up somewhere. But, and what if each card spiders? <gasps> That's a horrible, horrible thought. Thank you, Shantano. <laughs> there were to be only 52 spiders. 54 if you count the two jokers. Joker 54 spiders. spiders is not a fun day. And, and I, for one, vote against Joker Spiders. <laughs> but not as strongly as I vote against spidering my mind. <laughs> I felt like your mind was going to go anywhere. Besides, even if even if we wanted to do this incantation, aren't there, like, ingredients that we have to gather first? Sure, but how hard can that be? Well, what does it require? Shad know if you've been reading the book. Wait, what's that? Yes, I have been reading the book. Oh, wait a minute. You're you're trying to <clears throat> you're asking about the uh this you're asking a... about the golden sun ritual or are you asking about the uh the, the incantation you got from Varigan? Uh from Varigan. <laughs> oh that's right, you also have that book, don't you? Oh holy crap. <laughs> yep. We're a traveling library at this point. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Let me we pull that one up again. <laughs> we have weaponized books and we are not afraid to use them. It's fair. <laughs> We're just going to spider everyone's house. Someone has a weaponized book. Um, all right. Let me see if I can if I can find the name of it again. Because um, it's a specific one. Wasn't it like talking to something or... Well, yeah, I mean, it was calling it was, for aid. It was call, yeah, calling something about calling for aid. Um, and uh, let me see if I've got the. Uh, let me see if I. 
Do you open the right thing? Wasn't uh, the ritual like if you wanted a specific uh, answer to something? Okay, let's see. The spidered house. Secret of the adherence found it. Oh yeah, yeah. that's the book. Um. Yeah, secret of the the right. secrets of the adherence is the book that you found. And uh, um, the invocation of beseech. Beseech. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Beseech, the invocation. Here it is. It's not an incantation, it's an invocation. Okay, so yeah, you need uh, incense, one crystal orb's worth of incense. You need vellum inscribed with as much history and detail as possible about the being involved. Um, that's uh, one crystal orb uh, in cost for that. Uh, three leaves of gratitude, or another emotion depending on the visualized perception of the being involved. Uh, that, that is a cost of 75 crystal orbs. Four hours preparation and one hour performance. The practitioner calls upon a higher power named in the performance, offering gifts in the form of emotions. The practitioner asks for a specific favor. The favor can be anything, but to have a chance at success, the favor should be something within the power of the being and something the being would do in theory, no ethical barriers. If the practitioner gains the attention of the being, they will not physically manifest, but will arrive as a disembodied spirit. Usually the being will ask questions to gain clarification as to what the Vizlai wants them to do and why. Many beings will ask for something in return, usually in the form of a task, not a gift or payment. Some may ask for a favor to be named later. Beseech does not compel the contact of being in any way. It is a pale invocation. Now. Can you see what being was being beseeched? Yes. Uh -huh. um, now that Shandano has had time to go over it, um, you found, here's the thing. Uh, the, the things that um, Varigan was using, the ingredients, got consumed, most of them. Um, but you do have the remains of the vellum. Okay. And the name of the being that's there in the vellum is Igthamad. Spell? <laughs> I G T H A M. A.D. So does anyone know who this Igthamad that we will be summoning is? Didn't... Um, Jim, I, I cannot remember, but did I not ask Lady Volt about what might have caused the spider and you didn't? I get some indication indication that this might be like an actual spider. There, there was there was a thought. Uh, you had a thought about that, and uh, Lady Volt, because Lady Volt had thought, well, yeah, I wonder if that's it, if there's any connection to uh, the fact that her elegance uh, collects taxidermied spiders, and. She said that might be possible. That could be terribly dangerous if it's the wrong spider. There is not a lot of information on the vellum. You think that might be where things went wrong? <laughs> um, but among the... Uh, among the things uh, that you can make out still on the vellum where it's not scorched, um, it does, it repeats the name Igthamad. It's somewhere it says, of the eight paths. So most of the ingredients seem to be easy to procure. 
we should probably get more information on this Ixenmod before we try. Maybe we should go to a library. <laughs> um. Well, we were just there. And did you look up this Igthamod? No. We looked up some sun things and some city planning things. I looked at a lot of things about plants. We had a sleepover. Yes. At the library. I didn't know the library did that. Apparently it does. If if not before, I think we made it a thing. All right. We're, uh, we're starting new trends. But 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 the library seems rather touchy about their information giving. I'm not sure that Well, there's all the good books are behind this closed gate and you're not supposed to go back behind the closed gate, but we got to go back behind the closed gate because there was a problem with the lacuna and we had to save the lacuna, which meant it was okay to break the rules. But now, you know, now there's rules and, and well, there's not an injured lacuna, so we wouldn't be able to go back behind the gate, you see. Right. Okay. Wait, what, what books did I end up getting? Oh, yes, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> you got a couple of books. Um, so, let's see, you, you, wanted, uh, you wanted books about, uh, that, that, that would help to deal with the, uh, with the, Limerick, uh, Street. the Limerick Street situation. Um, and, uh, okay. So, yeah, the, the the entity in particular that you had retrieve these books for you, it's 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 interesting because it can sometimes see things and sometimes can't, and sometimes doesn't know entirely what it is, the significance of the, the things that it's seeing. Um, but yes, um, so you've got a couple of things. One of them is. Um, one of them is a city planning book um, that has it's actually like a record that someone has made of uh, of things in the uh, in, in, in actually in the Silver Hill area um for some reason, that was a forbidden book. Um, there is a book that is a somewhat slimmer volume that you can immediately see why it's a forbidden book because it says, The Safe Handling of Mirrors. And let's see, anything else I want to make sure that is sort of, sort of spelled out. Um, yeah, there is one more thing that is also apparently was in the, uh, the forbidden book, in the forbidden book section. And it is a registry of the House of the Forgotten. Oh. And that's in Mac's stack of books? Or just something that we saw? That's in Mac's stack that? of books. <laughs> so so, so Mac is just going to look at, at there his There apparently is a way to use the knowledge in these three books to help that, that to help to sort out what's going on. Oh. Specifically these three books? 
Like not all the books we've gotten, but these three specifically? Mac got these three books under very specific circumstances. <laughs> but how much of those he wants to tell anyone is entirely up to them. <laughs> So he's just going to um, mention something about it, but then he just looks around the group and just tucks it back in and says, uh, well, um, I could use a quiet place to sort of just uh, catch up on my reading. Uh, Sha crosses her arms and does her best to not make any eye contact. <laughs> I mean, you're not using your off reading room. It's okay for me to just pop down in the mine, right? Absolutely. I... Thanks a lot, Sean. No, no. You're a great I... friend. You know that. But, I, but th thank you. <laughs> I, 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 tr I do try, but I, I think you're not a guest. Uh, you're you're also... not you, there. You could probably use some more popcorn and drinks too. Um, I maybe I'll stop by the. Uh, convenience store on the way and grab that. Yeah, can you spot a five? <laughs> Mac, I'm, I, I love having you over as a guest, but you're not a guest when I'm not there, then you're just a home invader? I don't know. I, I'm not sure on the definitions of this. It seems very uncomfortable. I, I feel like I'm a mind sitter. A mind sitter, but I, I, I have invisible creatures for that. I mean, if that's what you really claim, I don't think they do a very good job of cleaning because uh, every night there's always, you know, remnants of. I mean, yes, okay. Or... So the things things do happen, but they catch up with them eventually. I don't think that's appropriate to discuss and company okay cool so um yeah I'll yes you may go read you may buy your own popcorn okay but uh if you have any of it i'm gonna expect you to um chip I in don't for the eat popcorn oh well more for me then I think Shaw just like sits and like pulls out her uh, her viewfinder sketchbook and just starts like looking at things. <laughs> so uh, um, what are we what are we doing today, guys? I have an idea. I call her the um, the owner. Yes. Uh, yes. What's up? Uh. I was wondering, um, by any chance, would there happen to have been any uh, emotions or poems recited about uh, someone named Ichthamod that you would happen to have on hand? Yeah. I'm going to have a look through. And he's going to go back and he's going to look through the, uh, he's going to look through his tome of O Poetry. <coughs> And, uh, I shall draw another card to see how things are going. Not only there, but here as well. All right. Let's see. Dee -dee -dee -dee. card is a blue screen. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oh. It's it's our old friend the misunderstood beast, but not the dangerous elixir. Not the dangerous elixir. No. No. As it turns out, <laughs> not the dangerous elixir. Maybe next time. Um just as a reminder, its meanings are mistakes, gentleness, friendship, danger, and betrayal. Um, something is not what it seems, basically, in divination. 
usually something that uh, looking for things from unexpected quarters. Um, and uh, so, <laughs> um. Yeah, he's uh, so he, he before I come back with this uh, with this uh, this 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 uh, um, emotional record. Um, is there anything else anyone is doing whilst uh, or trying to sort out whilst whilst we have a second? Um, I think uh, Mac would ask. Hey, um, so this place is called the Broken Mirror. Are there any unbroken mirrors somewhere around here? Are you looking for an unbroken mirror? I've heard mirrors are um, dangerous. It can't be that bad. All I do is just reflect an image. God pulls the viewfinder down and says, where do you live? <laughs> That's not the way mirrors work here. That's just the way that mirrors work in the fake place. Well, um, I usually split my time between the um, hostel and uh, your mine. Maybe well, sometimes of... I might crash at the uh, alley next to um, Boar's house, but... Uh, but those are all real places, only in shadow. Are mirrors just reflections? Well, I'm pretty sure that uh, it's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be. And I'm sure that uh, with careful handling, it can be used to great effect. And why would you want to handle a mirror? For what purpose? Well, I would need to play around with the mirror for a bit to figure out exactly how I would be able to use it to maximum effect. I mean, magic is a science and, you know, it's totally fair to experiment. I don't know if you could find one, but you could probably have someone make one this is true i'm sure we could also find one if we were really determined but i mean if that's a broken mirror i would assume that there's an unbroken mirror somewhere well it is just a name Chat, is it just a name sir <laughs> he's coming back with a with this tome and uh, he says uh, is what just a name? Broken mirror. I um, just wanted to know if there were any unbroken mirrors you know of. Oh. Uh, well, we don't talk about that. <laughs> and he, uh, he puts the, uh, he sets this book down and he flips it open. And, uh, he will... Look over. Uh, the someone came up with a song about uh, the ballad of Lady Igthamud. Who came up with this song? And. Uh, just sort of looking it over. Now, this is from a little while ago. Um, it was, uh, yeah, we actually pull up a name here. More names! So 
Those are terrible names. Here we go. Um, it says uh, somebody named uh, Ogsek. It's very, uh, it's very mournful. Very mournful. Uh, it's talking about, uh, walking on the, uh, Walking on the banks of the river, and uh, Ella's talking about and uh, watching his his uh, his love getting pulled away, dragged away down by uh, the influence of a demon. This uh, lady, this uh, lady Igthamad being someone who's knows things in all directions, or uh, knows things in well, no, wait, it was in uh, in eight directions. It says yeah, knows things in eight directions. Was uh, was very. Uh, it's very sad, very mournful. And the uh, thought that uh, that Igthamad always will seek to, to free herself to once again become uh, an example of goodness and knowledge. Hmm. Wow, this reads like an 80s hair metal ballad. <laughs> he did have kind of big hair, I think. It was a long time ago. <laughs> Doesn't sound like Aethamon is malicious. I mean, goodness and knowledge sounds sounds like a very good goal. Yeah. Although eight paths and eight directions does make me think that... Well, I mean, spiders have eight legs. That's all I'm saying. Oh, that is a very good point for. Her. Yeah. yeah, same as the number of sons. And uh, he closes the book. <laughs> and it. Mm. Oh, that was poetic. Ooh, maybe all spiders are sons, and all the sons are spiders. You guys are full of distressing Every thoughts this morning. And everything is a spider when it comes down to it. I, I don't. I, I hope that's not true. I mean, I'm not a spider. <laughs> <laughs> Have you checked? Yes. <laughs> and if everything's I, already a spider, it doesn't really matter where we do the incantation then. Well, good. We'll do it at your place. How, before we do this incantation, it's right here. <laughs> Before we do this incantation, <clears throat> do we want to go check out the station that Ver was mentioned in Varigan's note? What station? Well, and I'll I'll pull out the note that I got out of Varigan's pocket. Um, the the um, I don't think this ever got delivered, but um, in his note to this. M uh, person, Varigan said that after he tried the incantation, he was going to go to 13th station 
and something about there being ghosts there. Ooh. And I thought, if he thought there was something worthwhile or worth investigating there. Do you think it would... Do you think it would give us more information to put on the vellum so perhaps we don't have to turn Chateau's apartment into a spider? It's technically not my apartment, but... Well, and if, if there's nothing there, we could always do the incantation there, maybe? Oh, also a solid plan. Um, I just thought we should check out this mention of ghosts and see if there's anything... I think 13 Station isn't far from where Limerick Street used to be, so... Maybe there's a connection. For those of you who may be wondering about the, uh, the note, here that is. Dear M, I attempted to use an invocation to get us some help, but something went wrong and now strange things are happening in my house. I'm going to leave here and go to 13 Station. Remember how Mercy said that their ghosts were there? Maybe they're still there. If that doesn't work, I'm going to uh, going to beg the third hand for help. Very good. I don't know, I just thought it might be worth looking into before we go accidentally spidering a building. I know. I really object to the fact that no one has faith in our magic abilities. It's I, nothing to do with our magic abilities. It's it could be a property of what we're what we're reaching out to. Yes, it it seems like Farrigan from what her elegance was saying, has a fair amount of magical ability. I don't think that the incantation is necessarily based on ability so much as maybe a missing piece and it sounds like Varigan, who once again has not been absent from reality as long as we have thought that they should go to the station to find out some more information so it's reasonable i promise you mac nobody is doubting your ability i didn't say my ability i just said that you know as a whole we are pretty good group of mages. Uh, Varigan was too. I mean, he's he was her elegance's child. Well, that's one person, and we're five, sometimes six or seven, so... Or eight, because, you know, spiders. So, alright, let's fine. Let's just go down to the station. I mean... We could just scuttle right down. You don't want to talk to the ghost, Mac? Yeah, that's not like you. You enjoy talking to spirits. That's true. Why do these ghosts bother you? I didn't say these ghosts bother me. It's just that... Uh, Are you afraid of the ghosts, Mac? I am not afraid of the ghosts. I, I, is that what this I just is? don't want to... Look, I, if I go down there, everyone's going to want to climb in on the vessel because I, no, I, you there know, aren't very many vessels around here and uh, I'm not like I can just turn off the Uber light. <laughs> They're not like real ghosts. Excuse me. You look what? over and you see uh, you you see sitting in the chair. You see Thomas uh, sitting in a in an empty chair near the uh, what was an empty chair near the not far from the table. Uh, oh, hello, Thomas. I thought you'd forgotten about me. I thought you'd forgotten about about the station and going. And, they're, they're kind of weird in there. They're not like they're not like real ghosts. They're they're something else. Do you know why they're different? I don't know. They don't. They, they, they do say the same stuff over and over, and they're not they're not like they're all. It, it, it's not like they're, they're they're not dead are they just like echoes maybe so you've talked to them before uh, uh, not much a little bit are they capable of talking yeah yeah they talk well, then, I mean, Aroshka and I are good. Hmm. 
No, oh, okay, let's go down. Do you want to come with us to the station, Thomas? Okay. I, I can do that. Yeah. Um, they're, they're like... They're like lives that weren't allowed. Weren't allowed? Yeah. I've seen... Um, I've talked to... The ones I've talked to up there um, called themselves Mercy and Darren. Mercy and Darren? Yeah. Was there any and name? you talked to them at the station? They, they were these ghost things? Yeah. What, what is the 13th station? Is that the, the train station that isn't there that Balthazar was talking about? I think so. Um, so... Sorry, uh, can Mac, um, Mac is going to, um, pull out the, uh, Silver City planning book and maybe flip through that just to see if, uh, there's any reference to, uh, that station? There is. Um, you're sort of flipping through, um, and, uh, it actually, it's, there is a, uh, that someone actually has opened to that page frequently, and that's actually, it's toward the end of the book, and they stopped writing at that point. Um, but what it said, it, it does tell you, is that it does, there's this piece on 13 Station, um, that it was uh, supposed to be a rail station for the city's train system, but the track was never finished. Um, and that they had to stop because of the war, basically, as far as getting it built. Um, and then, basically, it seems to be written as sort of like that, uh, the last entry is like, so from like years later, and, uh, there's just sort of a big X over going back in. Uh, those sort of sort of where, where they talk about uh, maybe maybe we'll go back in and see about renovating, uh, use it for something else. But no. And then sort of in the in the side notes, side notes it just says haunted. Huh. That's interesting. So did it say that there are tracks to um, 13 stations still exist somewhere? No, they, uh, the, the, mm, I think that there, there were, there were tracks, but they didn't, uh, they never linked them up with the, uh, they, they never linked up with the city's rail system. They never got that far. Huh. So, uh, would I be able to navigate us to um, this said 13th station? Oh, yeah, you've got the address right there. Oh, cool. That's, uh... I just want to take a minute to point out, um, and I'm going to pull out Berrigan's note again and brandish it around a bit more, that the note specifically says, mentions someone named Mercy. Okay, so... You have to go to a haunted, uh, incomplete rail station with a very unlucky number and look for a spirit and or ghost by the name of Mercy. Sounds easy. Sounds totally safe, too. Yeah, not only with that. I wonder if we can get the, uh, get the sledgehammers from the school. Well, if, if we do, then, then, oh, I've forgotten her name. Oh, oh there God. we go. Aisha wouldn't be able to get in and out of the school if we took the sledgehammers away. Well, 
I don't want to go to the big box store to get a sledgehammer. No, that would be a bad idea. I don't think sledgehammers work very well about, against ghosts. I wasn't going against the ghosts. I was just saying if we needed to break something down, we'd have a sledgehammer. You can always ask Karen to borrow one. You could see if maybe there are artisanal sledgehammers at the I think we should just store. go to the station. If we need a sledgehammer, we can backtrack. I think that's a sound plan. Okay, Peter Gabriel. Let's uh, make our way down to uh, 13th Station then. You might want to leave a note someone to... Uh... I should probably leave a note to a friend in case something goes wrong. Are we leaving a note so that the next band of adventurers can follow us? <laughs> Are, do we have to leave notes to friends? Is that what you do? I don't know. I, I don't have any friends besides you guys. <laughs> oh, you're right. Although I, I did find friend. out why so many people wanted to be my friend. I like the Vances even less now. What do you mean? I read a book about the thing I was working on and it's really unpleasant. Um, and apparently once everyone figured out that I forgot about it, they were trying to break into my house so that they could get it. Speaking of which, my house has been disappeared along with that street, which is maybe a good thing. Oh no. I might need another place to crash, so we should probably try to get this. Well, I mean, I have a different again. house now. I, I should have clarified my old house, the one that didn't like me anymore. I assume it liked me at some point. Well, I mean, real estate is very lucrative, so you know, just getting another house on a place like Limerick Street, can you just imagine how much it depreciated by now? Yeah, maybe your house will like you again once we find it and bring it back. I don't think so, but maybe. There was also that giant telescope that seemed to think it was really dangerous, too. That was a thing. So, yeah, uh, I think it would be a good idea to leave a note for uh, a colleague or something. A note. Uh, okay, I, mean, I, will, I will leave a note. I don't have to leave it out. I can just call him right now. I don't think that you No, should... you're bringing your friend with us. Yes, I think that coin is good pocket pocket coin for the journey, not... I mean, I was just going to leave a note for Charles Abernathy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I might miss dinner with him, so... I mean, okay, let's leave a note and then go see what we can see. All right. Oh, before we go, uh, call over the owner again. And would it be possible to buy some of your incense? I'm sure I'm mostly your, uh, the poets use incense, right? Oh, yeah. What flavor? What flavor would you like? Maybe something that's um, a spider might like. Uh, fly favorite. Um, can oh, spiders yeah. smell things? Do they have noses? <laughs> I'm going to legitimately Google this. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> 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 we're going to learn all about spiders today. <laughs> you like to watch it, but really you're watching a Discovery yeah. Channel special. <laughs> oh, creepily, um, they do through their legs. I am so uncomfortable right now. I'm so glad I know this now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they can taste through their legs, too. So oh. now that's the thing that you know. Oh, my. The more you know. Thanks. Hey. You're going to unlearn that. <laughs> so, you're, so you're saying a, a spider tastes us if it ever crawls over us. Yeah. Oh, uh, flies, <laughs> flies do that too, actually. I knew that already. I didn't expect that spiders also did it, but flies taste with their feet. 
So so imagine if your coffee table just spidered and it started crawling all over you. It would taste and smell you at the same time. Hey, look at that. I've got a bunch of hornet incense left. <laughs> he has a few. He has these incense sticks. There's a little bundle oh. of them. I bet that tastes spicy to spiders. Yeah, that should work. I'll be... I'll be a couple of orbs. <laughs> you yeah, just put just put it on uh, Chantino's tab. He said that was like forty orbs, right? No, he said a couple of orbs. It's just a couple, two orbs. Uh, the, oh, your tab? The, yeah, no, for for the um, incantation. Oh, the incantation. Uh, yeah, the the incantation uh, required things with. Okay, so the most expensive part of the of the the or the invocation, the invoca- invocation, the invocation. Yeah, um, the invocation prior to the incantation will be okay. Um, the the most expensive part of it are the leaves of gratitude, um, because they're going to be like twenty five crystal orbs a piece, and you need three of them. Lord. Um, the incense. Oh, actually, the incense costs one crystal orb. Apparently, um, so we're good. So it, it's it's one crystal crystal orb, which is more than a glass orb. I think it's like I think it's ten glass orbs. I think um, the vellum costs one crystal orb, and uh, the the leaves of gratitude costs a total of seventy five crystal orbs. Oh, maybe we should shake down that alley next to um, Vor's house. We lost some uh, cash. <laughs> Somebody. Matt, didn't you say that you spend some nights in that alley? Is that was that, was that you? Yeah, who said that. That's true. Do you do you owe do you owe Tony rent? <laughs> If I did, he's never charged me, so. He's <laughs> just waiting. <laughs> just waiting there with his baseball bat. Um. <laughs> Maybe I'm just sleeping on uh, Vor's lawn or something on a nice night. Possible. Maybe we I mean, could go I to wouldn't the... kick you off. <laughs> sleeping there with all the uh, with, with all the hobos and gambling addicts. <laughs> <laughs> Boar's home for the wayward. Okay. Are we ready to go? Indeed. Yes, let's. So, are, are we heading? Where are we heading? 13th station. 13th, okay. st- 13th station. 13th station. Okay. Awesome. All right. Let me see here. Wait. Here. Hang on. There's, wait. Actual material here. Hold on. It's right. It's right here. Um, <laughs> oh no! Did we find plot again? You found it. You found <laughs> plot. <laughs> you struck <laughs> plot. The scavenger here for mining. Congratulations! You struck plot. <laughs> <laughs> We, we we actually made it to the directed campaign, which means, <laughs> which, which, which means our which means our warning is actually legit. I know, right? That was, that was there might it. actually be spoilers. Warning: these players may actually fail to divert Jim from the directed campaign. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are, Thirteen Station. Um, you're uh, you're 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 going to be coming up on it. Um, so in the middle of the Silver Hill neighborhood, is it's it's a dilapidated brick building. Um, above the door, a large sign reads 13 Station. Um, I think I actually have the sign here. Uh, it showed up for me. In uh, And now for everyone else. Uh, this was to be a train station back when uh, the Deathless Triumvirate promised to get the city's train station system to connect to Fartown despite it being located in a different world from the rest of the city. But the war prevented the initiative from ever coming to fruition, and the station was never utilized. And there we are. So, 
You're heading towards this place. Um, it's basically big. Uh, you know, it's it's at the end of uh, one of those streets. I think it's at the end of. Uh, I think it's at the end of Imago. Yeah, it's Imago. Um, and. Uh, I think we decided the horse statue was actually on the other one. It was actually on Delahan, right? Even though on the map it's on, they 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 swapped it on the map. But uh, um, anyway, the square with the the statue of the person on the horse. Anyway, um, you get up, you head up back up into Silver Hill. You're heading north. Um, see that big brick building at the end of the uh, at the end of uh, at the end of Imago. You head up to it. <clears throat> large kind of uh, sort of big uh, big windows uh, up high sort of in this uh, sort of arch looking way it's large wide brick building there's this sort of fencing around it that you kind of have to duck under um, and there are a number of uh, yeah, you know, there, there, there are doors in, leading in. Going in then. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Going in <laughs> first. Um. Well, I will make a point to prance in before Mac to show that I'm less afraid of ghosts than Mac is. <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> I'm going to so, walk in and be like, hello, ghosts. Inside, you've got there are broken benches and a lot of a lot of trash scattered around. First thing you see, um, faded maps on the walls that are that you see ra rail routes that, that never existed. And uh, there's a there's an empty newspaper stand and looks like the start of an unfinished cafe off to the side. Um, is this large? <clears throat> is there in a, this large open thoroughfare you see between two train platforms? Um, there are unfinished clocks on the walls. There are I did not finish a clock. A bunch of <laughs> makeshift beds that look like they might have been brought in by by homeless folk, even though the the owners are not there. Um. There's a bunch of bunch of refuse and stuff out here. A bunch of uh, bunch of just stuff just lying all over the place. Hey, maybe we should just do the incantation here. Look at all this stuff that we can spider. Well, it's, I did suggest that. Um, I I'd like to just shout out sort of similar to what Arashka did. And say. Um, we're looking for someone named Mercy. Okay. So. Mercy, please report to the newsstand. Mercy, to the newsstand. There is... There's a moment when you're seeing sort of the dust just sort of fil sort of filtering through this the light as it's coming down from the high windows. And then you hear this, and then you hear it. There's this sort of this clang. Clang. It's like, a, let's say it's a sort of clang and then a, how do I describe this sound? Clang, scrape, clang, scrape, clang, scrape. And it's getting closer. Did the note say Louder. anything about mercy being made partially of like a clangy thing? 
Well, no, so that's what's strange. The note says that Mercy, Mercy said that their ghosts were at 13 Station, which makes it sound like Berrigan was talking to Mercy. And yet, Thomas said that there is a ghost here named Mercy. Thomas, are you still here? And he fades in for a second. And he's just sort of looking around. He's like, it's still here. It's still here. What is it? He points. And you see sort of fading in. Oh, no. It's a figure that's about nine feet tall. Um, it's wearing a... Uh, It looks like a person, but they're wearing this suit that seems to be covered in clocks, clock faces. It's got these goggles that look like in each one of the two eyes is a clock face. And it looks kind of, uh, kind of metallic. And it leans forward, and as its left foot steps down, you hear a clang, and then as it drags its right foot, you hear a scrape. Are you Mercy? And it lurches toward you. Or flavorfully. So. Wait, what? Oh, mercy or uh, favor flave? Not exactly that kind of clock. These are less functional than that clock. Than that clock would be. Oh man. Uh, yeah, I know. As it steps forward, it kind of raises one hand to sort of shifts its bowler hat down as the little clocks in its eyes turn red. It reaches up with what looks like a cane, but you realize that it's like the large hand of a clock. And it comes forward. It will it will it will say late. And uh, I think we're actually very close to to ten, so I think this is where we're going. To, uh, this might be no. no. This could be where we no. No, wait, no, wait. We don't do that. We don't do cliffhangers here. That's right. I keep forgetting. Um, sorry, I've been too used to running other games where I do cliffhangers. <laughs> no, it just is sort of is lurching forward very slowly. It's lurching forward very slowly. Um. And you do see that it's, uh, as it does so, basically, and you see it sort of echoes out late, and you can all hear in the distance the sound of a train. And uh, I will need everyone to defend from a level five mental attack. Oh, dear. <laughs> this is a resistance roll. Oh, my. Okay, well, I have resist, so four. Um, oh, oh. Not good. I do have resist. What can I add? What do I roll for this? Oh, yeah, dear. what do you roll for resist? Is there a bene that goes uh, with that? So there is, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, um, <clears throat> you're resisting, um, hang on, it's, it's a mental thing. Um, Withstand doesn't help with that, right? Withstand is just physical. Resist defense is used when a character has an effect affecting their mind. If the character wants to use of any, it should come from their intellect pool. Okay. Into this it. is this is a, a defense action. Um, and it's resist, not withstand, because withstand is physical. Yes, that's right. Okay. Resist. Resist is mental. 
would survival work towards this? Um, I feel as though, it, yeah, yeah, because of the nature of this particular attack, um, you're getting this building sense of dread, um, and not arriving on time. And I, um, so I have a skill in understanding magic that lies outside codified practices. Would that be of use here? Uh, I think it might be. He seems pretty like, outside codified practices. He's, he's, yeah, this uh, this this thing is uh, is certainly not codified in the way that it should be. Um, it's codified just in a very different way. Um, okay. So yeah, very much a uh, it's very much that kind of thing. So yeah, I would say, I'd say that will help. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. I failed. Yeah. You failed. Yep. Um, we, we, let's see how everyone else does. So, um, do um, anything you want to so bring into it? This is just like a regular roll, so you can bring things yeah. into it. You can make I'm it magical if you want. <laughs> I'm going to spend two intellect because I am never late. <laughs> Yeah, the the uh, so I have, the, the, oh, the challenge is five. That ties. But so if, if I rolled yeah, a you, three and I spent two, does that give me does that ties, right? Yes. Is a tie a win or is a tie a lose? You realize how long it's been? You realize how long it's been? Let's see. Um, <laughs> please, I rolled a please, six. Please have the word. Oh, you're in fine. There. Vor and her mm. dice, man. See, I don't know if this is. I have forgotten if this is a ties go to the defender game or a ties go to the. Uh... Uh, well, everybody else rolls. I can pull up the magic sheet. Can I use an ephemera during this, or? Um, what are you looking to use? Uh, my blue potion, which gives me three bene to my intellect, and one to sorcery. I am terribly sorry. I, 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 I was receiving information for, through my eyes for a moment, and I, I, I neglected to actually be able to hear everything. I apologize. What was it? No worries. Uh, I have a blue potion, which gives me uh, three bene to intellect and one to sorcery. Oh, yeah. You can gulp that down real quick. <laughs> okay. So I'll do that, and then I'll use four intellect to make me, I don't need to make a natural one. Right. Hey. Oh. Okay. Um, I extremely resisted. That's uh, now that's technically a zero, but at the same time, it's uh, it's oh. <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, but uh, let's see. Okay. So everyone, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna say you're okay. I'm gonna say Shaw is okay. Uh, so it's everyone yeah. except Mac. Um, so. Yeah, basically the thing that happens here, um, the thing what happens here, come on, come on, all right, all right, so, okay, gotcha, so yeah, initially, so Mac, what you see immediately is you see a train with a clock face on its front coming for you, directly at you. And you uh, are, are overwhelmed with a, uh, with a desire to flee the station. <laughs> and uh, flee the station I shall. Um, pushing past uh, whoever was behind me, which is probably Orochka and uh, Vors, in my mad scramble to um, not be where I am now. Excellent. Yes. Ah! Yes. You uh, you dash out. You back back out through the doors. You're heading out. Everyone else is okay. You you uh, you manage to resist. Um, And uh, you have a you have a moment if you would like to do something. 
those of you who are in the station. Um, I, I'm just going to... We're here looking for mercy on behalf of Varigan. Can you... Can you say anything other than late? Do you know where Mercy is? We don't mean you any harm. Okay. You may attempt to persuade this being, and Thomas is sort of whispering, the unforgiving clock, as though that's its name. You may attempt to reason with it. The challenge is seven. Reason with the unforgiving right. clock. Can I try to understand his motives? You certainly may. <laughs> um. Okay. Hang on. Let me see what I got here. <clears throat> okay. So I have, I have charm. So that'll get me to six. Okay. Um. If I use my mind reading ability, will that help here? Um, yeah, I think it, ha it has a mind, oh, no. so yeah, it could, maybe. <laughs> to try to manipulate it's that, oh, yeah, actually doing a thing to it, yeah, that's going to actually be a little, uh, it's got some degree of, uh, yeah, it's got some degree of resistance. Um, Possibly. Um, see, all these words that we use um, resist. Yes, it has uh, it has some resistance, so that might be a little more it will be a little more difficult if you're trying to use uh, mind magic against it. Um, well, I'm, I'm more than well. I mean, I get plus one die to try to read its yeah, mind. That's fair. Um, it's, it gets a plus two when it's uh, when it's resisting when it's resisting magic, so that would boot it back up to eight at this point, um, unless you're uh, oh, okay from, from six to eight, and then uh, if Shonano is helping by trying to understand its motives, um, which okay, is that's so a let's... skill you have, then that'll that'll also I think knock it down. So I won't use the mind magic then, and I'll just use my charm and Shantano's understand motive. That gets us down to five, right? Yeah. And then, can I game theory this? You might be able to, um, given, yeah, if you're sort of looking at the, what Shantano is sort of trying to tell you about understanding its motive. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically, Sean, to know what you're kind of picking up is that this thing is very much. You think this was maybe created out of the the lost potential here uh, for mm. people to be on time for their trains that are never coming. Um. So. So that's a thing. Um. And uh, it's a question of it being able to, if there's a way to word this uh, that allows it to keep to its timetable, then it might actually work. Um, is, are there, so I know you said there's like posters and stuff like all around here. Is there some kind of like old, old timetable or yeah. something that I could like twist to my advantage, be like, oh no, like according to that timetable over there, you know, the train doesn't come for another t half an hour. We're completely on time. We just want to talk to you. We promise we won't miss our train. Like, yeah, the uh, yeah, you could totally do that. You can basically you're looking for one of the uh, one of the trains that was supposed to go down to uh, <laughs> down outside Saturine, and uh, yeah. You kind of point out one of those, and so you can kind of yeah you can kind of swing it that way. Okay. Because if I can, 
interpret that as game theory, yeah. then we have this down to level two. Oh yeah, that'll yeah that'll, that'll probably help. <laughs> um, so God, oh God, damn it! Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? <laughs> the dice they That's go so both fun. ways. <laughs> Wait. Is anyone uh, is anyone else doing anything before this thing acts again? Um, well, I've already pulled out my battle fan and stepped to try and defend my my friends. Um, I right. I'm presuming, not still not being good at this game, that when you say that the <laughs> resist for the charm was a level seven, that this is a level seven character? Um, well, the challenge is seven to, uh, to per for persuading it. Um, it's a, it is a level five ordinarily. So if you're just like hitting it, then it's gonna be a level five. Uh, most things. But if I wanted to put it in a cage, would it be a level five character? Ah. Uh, it does. It would be level seven against that because it's a. Because uh, that's magic. Because it's magic, yeah. Well, well then, fine. I will just hit it with a sharp metal thing. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, if you want to spend things to try to get that down to a, to a more reasonable number, we can try. Well, that. I mean, seven is a <laughs> is a lot um, for me to do with with qualia stuff i'm much better at punching things than oh, okay. i am at magicking things right, um, you, you want to go ahead and punch it <laughs> so uh <laughs> i mean if nothing else uh Sha will complete her task of distracting it from her friends so sure. uh so you know uh i mean i could try to put it in a cage oh holy crap Oh, that sounds not good. Sorry, I just finally finished reading the rest of this thing. <laughs> that also doesn't <laughs> sound good, Jim. I mean, I read it before, but now I'm remembering. Now having looked at this paragraph again, um, I think no. your 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 better chance here because you can now you're look. I, I'm gonna just gonna give you this as you're sort of looking at it. Hitting it physically actually probably isn't gonna do anything. Oh. Um, because it's a ghost. Yeah, so your best bet is probably going to be to try to to try to to try to cage it or something similar. Okay, then pets, pets, pets. Um, <laughs> then I'm going to use my ability, um, inadvisably, uh, and hopefully someone's going to help me. Because I will absolutely help. Because wow. Um, okay. And in fact, I have an idea for how I help if if Jim will allow it. What you would you like to try to do to help? You said this thing was made up of like the impressions of the potential that could have been here, right? That's right. Is this something mean could eat? And not like, not to, like, just nibble a little bit to cause a I'm distraction. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking. Tries to. Um, I think at least in part, yes. Okay. Yeah. It, I'm really not trying to. I don't want to actually destroy this thing. I want Shaw to be able to cage it. But I'm, um, I'm hoping that mean sort of gnawing at this creature's very existence will cause enough of a distraction. It's that... going to be a very big meal you're feeding me, possibly. Just so you're aware. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> Me <and our> friends. <laughs> sure. Friends. Yes. <laughs> and it's, this is going to be like a couple of seconds. Like this is yeah. just like, all yeah, right, gonna... now Shaw. And then I like touch the the topaz to this clock thing. Did I uh, did I assign a level to meme? I don't think you did. Mm -hmm. Um. I was trying to remember what what level it was, and when you were trying to affect it, um, and I think it was like two or three. 
Uh, I don't remember. I'd have to go back and look. So I'm going to say this will give you at least, this will knock two off of its, uh, this will not, this will take, that'll, that'll give you two, basically using meme. Um, so that'll, that'll knock it back from a seven down, down to a five. That's helpful. Okay. That is helpful. Um, so I guess I'm trying to, once again, uh, learn how to play this game. So my Durance Vial is a level one ability. Uh, and then I just have to pass the target. So I would have to spend one sorcery just to enact the thing. Is that correct? I think so, yes. Also, okay. it does note that it does need two successes to affect it with magic. Um, so you're so probably... So I have to do that twice. So you might have to do it twice. Yeah, it depends. Well, if you get... If you're going to get or more than I one need... die, if you get, uh, if you get more than one... If, if both the dice are successes, then you'll get it all done in one. Oh, because for an ability, I roll two die. Well, for a, well you're, you're using for, magic. So yes. that's, that's kind of... Uh... Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to roll two die, and they both have to be successes. And I would like to apply... both of like two of my interaction bene to this basically to distract it and um kind of use shaw's uh i don't know how to explain it her sort of like indignation to just kind of like wear it down like how dare you say that we're late how dare you think that you even can understand the schedules that we're on um so i'd like to apply uh, two interactions for uh, my my snobby white lady rage. Um, You're learning it from Karen. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, Karen. And then so, yeah. I would like to also add a bene from my sortilege. And with my sortilege, I would might like to use the ticking inside me to take a deep breath and cause the sound of ticking in the station to pause. That's very interesting. Because how far down have you knocked it at this point? Because if you're using... Uh... That would be another three down from me. So two down from there. So that makes gives us to a target of two. Yeah. Okay. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. So you need so two I'm or better on two dice. I have to roll 2d10, yep. and I have to roll a 2 or better. Yep. I can't even look. You did it! Oh, wait. Yes! Oh, no, one of those is a zero. That's well, a surge. One of those is flux. Oh, oh no! <laughs> well, the story just got more interesting. Cool. So I guess what we what we see at least to start with is that Shaw like does this whole thing and you know stands out and like throws forward her cage and like summons her thing to get this thing and this moment of silence happens where all the ticking stops and then. So, uh, or you're uh, you're letting uh, you're letting meme out to uh, to to uh, gnaw on this thing a bit, yeah. Well I'm not letting Meme out. I'm just touching the topaz to the- I'm Running uh, up and touching the topaz. Yeah, I'm running up and touching the topaz because that's how I interact with Meme. Sure. So, sure. but only for like the briefest of seconds. Like- that's, Yes, that's all it takes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't make me lose my pet on my very first session with it, Jim. Jim, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> So here's the thing. <laughs> here's what happens. So when you do that, there is a moment. The ticking stops. The uh, the unforgiving clock looks down at you, and. It does something where it's pass. It does something where it's passing the, uh, its its cane, over you in some sort of, 
some sort of gesture that you realize that it's sort of turning it this clock hand counterclockwise and there's this brief and it's it's yelling it's actually as it does so it's like you can tell it's in pain because this thing is now the touch to it and trying to drain it so it is this and you see all the all its clock faces going backwards and then quite suddenly there is a sort of a thing not unlike the implosion that some of you witnessed the other day. Is this a spell by any chance? It's not a spell. It is magic. But there is, well, it's it's flux, to be specific. <laughs> oh, okay. There's a flux effect happening <clears throat> now. As Sha as the energies from the cage begin yanking this thing in it's like there's this giant of energies in front of you as everything seems to fall away under a miasma of this dust kicking up Creating this miasma, this this sepia miasma of uh, of clocks, and then when the dust clears, you're all sitting back in the cafe, and it's half an hour ago. But looking down at your, uh, but Shaw, looking down at your your cage, you do have. You see very tiny, this clock-like creature that's banging at the inside. And that, I think, is where we are going to end for the uh, this session. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, uh, you have indeed captured the Unforgiving Clock. Um, but uh, your flux caused a bit of unwinding to happen. And... Uh, was what is very strange we're not sure if everyone remembers the exact moment of it as well because well Vor looking down you see that meme is a little tired now <laughs> I give him a nice pet I give him a little full. good meme so that's uh, that's where we're going to uh, that's where we're going to pause now we're, we're gonna end this and at a point when you now have more time than you started with. <laughs> uh, we're going to go around and uh, do our outros um, for, uh, for our folks this week. Um, feel free to say any impressions you had of this session and where folks can find you. We shall once again start with Danielle. Hello, I'm Danielle at Ride Rock and Tour on Twitter, where you can find me talking about all manner of nerdy things. Uh, you can also find me this coming Wednesday on at Variant Rolls' Twitch channel. Um, it is the season finale of Dungeons and Deductibles, and the the insurance company is in the midst of a hostile magical takeover, and so they're trying to defend their company, um, but they've also been furloughed. So. It's going to be lots of fun. Um, come come enjoy the office satire set in Waterdeep with me and my wonderful players. Um, that is at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I want to keep me for as long as possible. <laughs> this is this my new favorite thing. <laughs> He's going to be really useful. No, no, he'll be useful to me too. That's uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't take him away so soon. <laughs> <laughs> be very useful. But I'm glad Shaw got to cage something. It's the first yes. time we've seen Shaw get to use that. Yes, excellent, excellent. <laughs> and uh, now over to Anino. Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name's Anino. You can find me on Twitter at Anino Gaming. Um, this is the first time I've ever had to actually run from something in sheer terror. So uh, I'm glad that I was able to take this battle, um, a break for this battle. Um, 
let's see. Uh, you can visit aninogaming.com to see my schedule of upcoming streams. Uh, apart from that, um, you'll probably find me here a lot. Uh, next Tuesday, for instance, for Fiasco at uh, 7.30 p.m., right? I think it's 7. 7. seven. Yeah. yeah, for the finale of uh, Fiasco, which is... Uh, what are we doing? How Hollywood Wives? Yep, that's the that's the playset. Yeah, cool. I'm gonna go three for three on uh, tragic deaths. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> I will make this happen. I'm scared. <laughs> oh. oh dear. Um, let's uh let's, let's move on to to Aris. Hello, I am Aris or Animus Panthera. You can mostly find me on Twitter. Uh, the only place you can find me playing games right now is right here, most Saturdays. Uh, that's it. I'm a zoologist and cosplayer, and I love talking about those things also on the Twitters. Any, any thoughts about this session? Um, a lot of horrifying revelations um, this session about spiders and also giant weird ghost train things. Um, also, the, we're gonna have to replay <laughs> half an hour's worth of in-game time. You still remember most of what happened. You don't actually have to technically replay it, but still. <laughs> but we never found the ghost we were looking for. Not yet, no, no. So we have to go back. It's fair. You can also take breaks if you want to. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> you can decide to have more tea before you go back. It's entirely up to you. If we already ordered drinks, can we re-drink them? You <laughs> can. More drinks. Did I drink? Wait, if I drink this now, did I not drink it before? No. Conundra. Conundra. <laughs> Wild, hey, how's it going? Yes, hi. Um, yes, I'm Wild Engineer. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Wild Engineer. Um, on Twitch, you can find me on this Thursdays for on Welcome to the Party for some Masks New Generation uh, Power Ranger Super Sentai style. I think we have a few games left in the season. Um, yeah, I may have a few things coming up next year, but other than that, you can find me here. Yay! Uh, any thoughts about this session? Oh, I need to pay attention to my spells because I hardly use them. <laughs> I totally forgot. Like, what level of spell was that that the clock has? That's an interesting question because it's not. It's it's more of an effect than a than a spell. Um, okay. And it's uh, it it has the ability to steal time from people. Um, so it's uh. It, it's just sort of. It's not really described specifically as a spell. That's the weird thing. Or um. Like the the first spell, the one that made everyone afraid. The that was a uh, yeah. That was an a that was. What, what it's also it an say? ability. Yeah, it's it's basically it's it's terror. It says. <laughs> um, it's a level five metal attack. That's all it says. It doesn't really specify as to what kind of thing it is. Um, Interesting. I'm not sure. It could be a thing. Yeah. Depends on how one interprets it, I guess. Uh, but uh, finally, over to Janaya. Hello, my name is Janaya, and you can find me at Janaya on Twitter and on Instagram. I make art and play good games with nice people. Um, but right now, as far as Twitch goes, you can only find me here because I am not even trying to do anything until after the holidays. Um, but follow me on Twitter and look out. There are some things coming up on my channel in the new year, including a, a World Building Wednesday stream and probably a very long, really dark Fall of Magic campaign. So uh, keep an eye out for that because I'll be looking for new players. That is awesome. That sounds excellent. Crash on that couch too. Hmm? <laughs> Can I crash on that couch too? It's, it's a good couch. Occasionally spiky and full of evil wizards, but yes. <laughs> nice um and i this was so good i really loved that the uh the rivalry between mac and shaw is like 
coming to its fruition. Like, you know, we picked that in the beginning just because it was kind of a, a fun backstory to have. And now that we're starting to really lean into it with this couch crashing thing, I just, I friggin' love it. It's so good. And I'm so glad that I rolled flex and didn't end up with another appendage because I've actually been deeply afraid of what was going to happen when I rolled flex. So I'm really Neither. glad that's okay. And I'm absolutely sure that having a beast that's too powerful for me in a cage that's not very secure can't possibly go wrong. So welcome to the club. Great. That'd be great. <laughs> like, Congratulations. Go, go team really dangerous pets. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Consequences will follow eventually. I I mean, are they mistakes or are they adventures, really? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Same thing. I, I think we're up to three uh, three out of five party members now with dangerous friends and or pets they're carrying around with them. So I don't know. A... We just got two more to go. I, I mean, Everybody's... I've got like, I, I, I've got friend pets. I guess yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I, I well, haven't, I haven't, I haven't summoned we, the hunt yet. That's true. I could, I could in theory be friends with pack practically anything. <laughs> Also true. I, 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 I think Aroshka's just, just got a spider something, and then she would have a fleet of uh, you know, mobile friends. <laughs> and I can, I can well, that only she I can talk to. <laughs> <laughs> I can summon my friend at any time. I mean, <laughs> it'd be a time. wonderful conversation. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I have a. I'm supposed to give it a, give, give them a. Tell them a, a note from someone else. Someone sent a message. So someone did send a message at some point, didn't they? That was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, I have the message. Oh, that's good. Because <laughs> I've completely forgotten what it is. I'll be delighted to see that. Oh my god. Message. From I just murder. like that this has you know become a Pokemon campaign. Essentially. <laughs> it kind of has. <laughs> which which uh, my best Jim did not want. <laughs> the real Pokemon. <laughs> I like I, I like the idea of going around gathering things. And so I mean, we're we're pretty much we're pretty much there. Um, wow. Okay. So yes, thank you, uh, uh, thank you, everyone. I'm uh, I'm Jim Ryan. Uh, you can find me at Other Doc on both Twitch and Twitter. My website is Jim Yes That Jim dot com, where you can find my Geek Observation podcast and links to my various other podcasts, audio dramas, writings, and such. I've got links down below to my website, Twitter, and YouTube channel, uh, where I have all of these things uh, that have been played on this channel. Um, over here on this channel on uh, Sundays, uh, we do one shots. So the one shot tomorrow is to serve her wintry hunger, uh, which is a story game about uh, four winter spirits uh, hunting down human prey. It's an interesting. I want to know sort how of, you're doing that online. It's a, it's a dark fairy tale. Yeah, we, we've got. Uh, we're going to be using Roll Twenty. I've got a thing set up where we're going to be keeping track of uh, die rolling and tokens and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I think it's uh, it, I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we've, we've got the folks have uh, picked out their roles at this point, and we'll uh, we're gonna we're gonna tell the story um, and uh, see how it goes. Um, on Monday nights, I run Deadlands over on Tales from the Grim uh, in a campaign called The Road to Desperation. Um, they're they're in the middle of fighting a bunch of crows. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and the people who control them. And so that will be interesting. Um, Tuesday, back on this channel, the finale of our three-part uh, little Deadland, Deadlands fiasco mini-campaign. I need to learn my words. Proper nouns, Jim, proper nouns. Uh, the, our, uh, our Tinseltown trilogy, we will be concluding with the Hollywood Wives play set, um, which will, I think we're going to have it be taking place in like the late 70s, um, if we can swing that. Um, there are one or two things we may have to change if if they come up, but uh, we'll 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 jump off we'll we'll jump off that bridge when we come to it. Um, but I think that'll be fun. Um, and uh, and of course on this channel back around to Saturday, and uh, that's when we're gonna have a bit more of this. I I don't believe we're gonna have our full cast next weekend because apparently there's some holiday that's going on um, that uh, that is happening. Uh, I'm not completely familiar with it. It involves, I think, uh, some kind of some kind of um, tree. Capitalist paganism. Yeah, something along those. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but uh, there there are a bunch of there are a bunch of holidays, uh, sort of a winter thing uh, that's going on. Uh, but 
we are uh, most likely, if things go as scheduled, we will have our next guest um, on with uh, those that are here. And we'll see, we'll see what happens. This is why I wanted to give them the option of not going to the train station, because anything could happen. We'll have to see. Um, so I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, here on this channel, signups are open right now for a one-shot that's happening a week from tomorrow, and that is Cthulhu Invictus. Uh, I'm going to take a, take a shot at running it. That's Call of Cthulhu in Ancient Rome. Um, the theme will be Saturnalia. Uh, because that's, of course, what it's going to be very close to. Um, so signups are open for that. Signups will be open soon for a one-shot of uh, Rosette Diceless that I'm going to be running um, for the end of the month. That's going to be a scenario that's set in, in uh, sort of alternate 70s UK, uh, where some people are psychic. Um, and sort of a spy thriller type deal called a scenario called Top of the World. I'm going to be, I've run it at conventions, but I'm going to try running it here. Um, and uh, so look for the, for signups to open for that soon. Uh, uh, just as usual, you can go down and click on RPG sign up, or you can go to uh, jimmyesthatgym.com, click on game sign up. As always, beginners are welcome. Well, when we hit the end card, I'm going to send a raid over to uh, my friend Christiana Ellis. Uh, who is currently playing a game called Iron Sworn? I have no idea what it is, um, but apparently there are things. They're rolling dice for it. Uh, as they're, 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 there's a thing. They're, they're rolling a thing called Edge, and they're doing a thing called Testing Your Spirit, which looks interesting. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and say hi to them. Feel free to hang on and say hi to them with us, if you are so inclined. That, again, will be when we hit the end card. In the meantime, folks, thank you all very much for watching. Take care, and I uh, will see you next week. Farewell.